Hi, this is Ian Mitchell with VTech Communications, and we just wanted to quickly show you basically how the actual programming works on our SNOME M100 KLE. Um, we're actually going to go into the web UI and show you what that looks like. So um, by default, we know that everything is actually already set up for a kind of basic four-line uh, keyline system. So uh, in order to see what that looks like, we're going to get into the web UI, and we can do that um, once we have any one of these handsets paired, we can just go to the phone itself and just hit that menu button. We'll just navigate to the IP address, so we'll look for status, network, IPv4. Now we have our IP address, so we just need to run over to our computer and plug in that address in the browser. Now if you do get a login prompt, um, our default login is just admin admin. And once we're in here, we can see that um, we do have two accounts registered. And we can also look at our handset status to see that we currently have um, three handsets or four handsets registered. And I am currently looking at um, handset four here. So just as we're going through the navigation, um, kind of keep that in mind. So again, um, out, out of the box, we only need uh, one SIP account, even though I've got two registered. We're gonna talk about private line um, a little bit later. So this first account, um, real basic, you just put in your uh, you know, username and password for the SIP account, the uh, SIP server registration information. And once you've done that, you're pretty much um, already done for a simple uh, keyline operation. And we can check the programming by basically seeing the keyline assignments here under handset settings. This is where we're actually performing the index. So this is already set up. We'll notice that key lines one, two, three, and four are already assigned to account one. And we notice that they're assigned to account one, all four of those keys, because again, what we're doing is we're indexing the number of calls. So the first call that comes in on account one will actually be indexed to the key line value one. The second call that comes into account one gets indexed on key line two. Third call on account one, again, gets indexed on um, key line three. And then this key line number here is actually matched in the programmable keys. So we notice if we go to the programmable keys and let's actually look at handset four. And you'll notice that all these are basically set up the same. So it doesn't matter if we're looking at handset, uh, you know, two, handset three or handset four. Um, this is the default configuration. So basically all handsets all line keys, which again, are those line keys on the actual phone itself. So line one, line two, line three, line four, um, they're all gonna be set to a type of key line, not, any, not anything else, not like a line or shared call or directory. They're all gonna be set to key line and then their value of one, two, three, and four, which just think of it as, again, it's just the index. We notice that the account is actually grayed out and it's not selectable because um, since this is keyline, it's actually referencing whatever account was set up in the keyline assignment. So that's why um, the account's grayed out because you're not actually even having to worry about picking what account is matched to the keyline. It's getting that from this particular keyline assignment. So because of this, this is why we have that synchronization where you can go to any handset and basically pick any one of these. And say, if I pick line three, it'll be using that third index and that will be synchronized across the different um, handsets and desk sets. And that's why, you know, if you get an incoming call, let's say on the first one, we can make a call in here. And of course, all those phones ring, we get the flashing light, we can answer it. And then if we do get a second call, of course, on that um, same incoming number, of course, we see the new caller ID that hits the phone, we get the flashing light, and we can just push that button to auto answer and it'll actually auto hold that first, um, that first call. And again, that's gonna get synchronized um, across to all the other um, phones that are programmed into the system, which you've seen before in some other videos. Now, one other thing that we can actually do is we can set a private line. So um, you probably saw in the web UI that any one of these keys here, uh, line one through four, can basically be, be programmed to other things as well. So as we jump back into the web UI, we do have a second account here that we've registered. And let's say this is actually gonna be a private uh, extension for one specific phone. 
you know, maybe it's the manager, maybe it's the person that does the ordering for the office and stuff like that, and they need their own uh, extension with their own DID. So we have that um, account registered. You know, we can see that there's the second account registered. Well, if we just do the same thing where we jump over to the programmable keys, we just need to know what phone that person has. So we can say, okay, handset four. And if we wanted to, well, maybe they don't need all four line indexes. You know, maybe they actually can use that last one as their private line. Well, we could just go in and say, okay, uh, line four on their phone is actually a line button, not a key line. And that's when it does allow us to pick the account. And we just say that is account two. And then on top of this, if you want to put a little security behind it to make sure that nobody else can actually utilize um, that account because it is, you know, private just for them, we can also go into this account assignments and we can basically um, make sure that no other handsets can actually see that account. So we see that we've got our matrix here of all of our handsets and then all of our accounts. And what we'll do is we'll just say, you know what, all these guys, they don't need access to account two. They only need uh, access to account one and, and the other ones. And then also we can take it a step further and say that, okay, on this uh, one handset that does have access to that private account, well, maybe that should be their default one. So we'll go ahead and go into our default account here. And this just means that if they make a phone call and they don't actually pick a line, they just start dialing a number. Um, it'll actually utilize that account for their outbound call. So we can go back to our handset here now that we've set this up. And we'll notice that, um, let's say I don't even hit one of these line keys. You know, I'm just sitting here, my phone is idle and get that backlight turned back on. So I'm sitting here idle. Well, I could go ahead and dial a number. And if I dial, you know, an outside line or somebody else's extension, just hit the dial key, it'll actually make an outbound call. And you can see that it automatically selected that fourth line key because it knew that that is my default account. And at the same token, let's see if I hang up on this. Again, this is what gives me that ability to have the private line. So, you know, if I get uh, a call on my main incoming extension, of course, that's going to hit all the phones. All the phones are going to ring. I'm going to get the flashing light, and I can answer that. And that, of course, is coming in on line one. But if I get a private call, so we end that one, and so somebody else gives me a call on my private extension, we see that only my phone rings. You're probably not hearing any other phones ring, and it's automatically coming in on line four, and it lets me answer. Now, we can actually take this a step further, because maybe you really do need to retain um, all four uh, indexes, even on that handset. Well, if we go on back into our web UI here, and again, we do have handset four, and it, it does have access to account two, and we do see that its default account is two, but if we go into our private, our programmable keys here, well, let's actually take that key away and say that, you know what, they actually need all four indexes. So we'll change back to key line. And again, that value is set to four. We notice that the account gets grayed out. It still shows two, but it's grayed out because it's not actually a valid parameter. We'll go ahead and save this. So now what happens, once we go back to our handset, is we notice that line four, that's still gonna be set as a key line now. So we do see that it's using that first account, that our main one, 006. And of course, if I get an incoming call on 006, it's gonna hit, of course, the first line key because this is the first um, call that's come in at this particular time. But at the same time, let's say I do get that private call coming in. Even though I don't have a line programmed, it basically just starts acting like other cordless handsets that you've probably um, used out there, where it's going to, you're going to rely on the call deck. So you know that I, my caller ID changed. I do have this new incoming call. It is coming in on my private extension, you know, 007. And I do have the ability to answer it, which I'm going to do right now. But notice that there is no line indication for it. And that's because, again, like a lot of other people's um, decked phones out there, we're just relying on the call deck in order to manage our calls. So it's still auto held that first call and it's still sitting there for anybody else to pick up um, that has that line programmed or they can actually go into calls here and we can still see that held call for that particular um, incoming call that that first one that came in on the main line 
And at the same time, let's say I do hold. So this is, I'm actually still talking on my private call here. I can actually still hold this because I've still got that dedicated hold key. And then if I hold the call, again, I can still go back into that calls list because you notice that, again, I don't have the line indication for that private call. But I can hit calls. And now I actually see both held calls. I see the one that everybody else can see that came in on the first account, 006. But I can also hit down, and now I see my private call. That's just on my account, 007. You can see their caller ID information, and I can resume that specific call. So that's some of the flexibility that we have um, with these programmable keys. You know, um, it's not just for key line emulation. It's not just for private lines. Um, you know, we allow you to have uh, multiple private lines, and that's actually why we give you the option to have eight SIP accounts on this particular um, solution along with the 10 phones. So you can do keyline emulation for the majority of the people, but at the same time, you have those additional accounts, so you can set up additional private lines for those specific people. And again, program it to a specific line key if you want, or just leave it as key lines for everybody, or even program one of those buttons for something else. If you want that button to directly go into your you know, directory or call history or redial, Feel free to do that as well. You know, we want we want this um, solution to be very flexible for you, so you can make it fit your needs. I hope this was helpful, and I look forward to having you join us on more videos in the future. Thanks.